I'm taking you to the edge today. The very edge. Right up to it. You'll be able to see it up close. Hello, Minders. Welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor. Glad you could join me today. And we're going to take care of another FAQ. Frequently asked question. And that is, what about those hard edges in watercolor? Why does watercolor make a hard edge? What can I do about it? How can I deal with it, improve it, work around it? And why do watercolor washes tend to sometimes make a dark outline? So the key to understanding watercolor, the mind of watercolor, eh, see what I did there? Is to understand how it happens and why it happens. So we're just gonna spend a few minutes on watercolor edges and what you can do to understand them better. You're an edgy guy, you know that? Skull bump. All right, I'm going to zoom in a little bit and we're going to talk about edges, which is a frequently asked question. Um, why is watercolor such a hard, hard edge medium and what can you do about edges that are darker than the rest of the wash? So that frequently happens. As you're probably aware already, uh, watercolor is not a soft blending medium the way like oils are. Most people like watercolor for that reason. It gives you these nice crisp, clean edges. Um, when you're painting with water, water has a flow and a resistance and where dry meets wet, it will create an edge. I know I'm being very elementary here, but just bear with me. So unless you have so much water that it's just gonna flow and run, it will only travel and pigment traveling with it will only travel where you have wet the paper basically and it will travel no further. Now you can use that to your advantage when you're painting. You can paint lighter colors, like a pale wash. So you can do what's called charging in. And charging in is taking heavier pigment and just charging it or dabbing it in. That water, that wetness will make it spread. And you can get a nice soft blend that way. But where you created the edge, where your initial wash is, it's still not going to go beyond that. It's a little softly spread everywhere else. You can paint with clear water. Uh, let me tilt it so you can see the glare where I have the water. So to take that a step further, if you're really trying to avoid a hard edge, you bring your water out beyond where you want your paint to blend or soften. You're painting within that, with that wet area but you're not painting near the edge. The wet edge is out here and I'm charging into that wet water and it flows and spreads very softly. It doesn't leave an edge. So yeah, watercolor is a hard edge medium but only to the edge of where wet and dry meet. So if you're wanting soft blending through wet and wet charging, you're going to need to put clear water out further. Now bear with me, I know your advanced painters are like, yeah, 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 I know all this, I know all this. But I get a lot of uh, newcomers new to the medium all the time and they're always asking about this. They're always asking about how to blend, number one. And I have a blending video that deals with this, so I'm going to link to that below. I actually have a couple. But what we're going to deal with are these edges because uh, they can get even worse. And we're going to talk about why that happens and how to avoid it. If you look here, you can see that just ever so slightly around the edge, the pigment is even darker than it is in the middle. Now some of that is due to your paper, but it's mostly due to the fact that uh, it's drying quicker on the edge than it is in the center. And so as long as this is wet, it continues to push pigment out to the edge. And you can accentuate that fact. Most people don't, they want the opposite, but let me do it again, only this time I'm going to push it. So let's say you're wanting a nice even wash. And, you know, it, it's a thing of beauty in watercolor to get a, a flat, even wash. It's basically the same everywhere, even on the edges. And the way to achieve that is to mop up any excess water before it dries so that the edge is just as wet as the center. And don't overbrush it, because as you overbrush it, uh, you're, you're pushing more of that moisture into the paper. And the edge is, all this time is drying. So the best way to end up with a nice flat wash is to put it down quickly, evenly, and soak up any extra water. The problem comes with 
more brushing and you look at that and say oh that's too dark I needed it much more pale so I'm going to add water okay right away in the center it's paler but now what's happened is you've loosened up all that pigment and you started pushing it out towards the edge so unless you come out to the edge and move that edge a little further that edge is going to be even darker still and we're going to accentuate the fact and sometimes people will come in painters will come in and even add more water and the effect gets worse and worse and worse so now it's like graduated out to the edge and now you have almost a line and so you, you'll say, oh, I got this nice and faded, nice and pale here. But what happened out here? You know, it didn't ble bleed out evenly. That's because it's already dried on the edge. So there is the reason. Now this is cotton paper, which I use almost exclusively. A number of you, uh, due to availability or cost, use a cheaper pulp paper. Now let's look at that for a minute because the effect is even worse on pulp paper. Now this is Canson XL. This is a wood pulp paper. Paint dries even quicker. I really should use, instead of that, let me use a darker color. Let's go with the purple this time. Now you can avoid it um, just by keeping your wash even. Um, and the way I do that, even with pulp paper, is, you know, uh, get your, your wash down, get it even, clean the brush out, you know, squeeze it so that it's not quite so wet and pick up and I usually pick up from the outer edges in so that I'm not manually pushing that pigment out to the edge and so there on pulp paper I can get a nice smooth wash too but a lot of times if you're using a really wet wash and you leave all that water on that on there and the same thing will happen whether it's cotton or pulp paper it just happens worse on pulp um, if you leave all that water on there it dries faster on the edge and so you'll have worse problems with hard edges. So I'm just going to wait a few minutes, and let this dry, and I'll come right back to you. All right, so we're back, and this is dried. And you can see how dramatic it is. And honestly, I added a few extra drops of water in the center just to dramatize the effect for video. Some of this doesn't show up great on video. I want to make sure you can see it. So that is a little exaggerated. But it is, it does show you what can happen if uh, you're putting down water or putting down a wash and then adding a lot of water to it. These edges tend to dry and set in pretty quickly. More quickly on pulp, but they do it on cotton paper also. So that's the cause. Or how do you deal with it? And I've already mentioned that when you're putting down a flat wash, you, you try to get the wash as even as you can without a lot of water standing in the middle. Try to get your wash pale or to the degree of paleness that you want out of the box. So it's easier to add and make something darker than it is to add water to it and make it lighter. That is if you're worried about dealing with these edges. Now if you have edges, um, and we all get them, we all get them frequently. If you're a watercolorist, you're going to get them. If you have too much of an edge that you don't want, um, what do you do then? Well, you can soften them. And I would start with just the standard watercolor brush first, see if that works. Different paints have different uh, staining degrees. You don't want to use a lot of water or else you'll just add a water spot. So just, uh, as you can see, some gentle brushing there has softened that edge. You'll get a little bit of staining out here if you want this to be, uh, to maintain the whiteness out here. But you can try to pick that up. Uh, just the tissue a lot of times will help. And now you can see this edge here is even with the same tone as the interior. Um, depending, again, on the strength of the paint, you can just grab a slightly stiffer brush. This is a bristle brush. This is a small one, but I have different sizes. This is used for oil and acrylic. It just gives you a little bit stiffer action. And that works really well to soften an edge, get rid of that line. And again, you don't need to do this unless it's making your uh, wash look like it's outlined. You know, especially if you're wanting the color to look like it's lighter to the outside than it is on the inside. And then an outline just looks 
really odd. And one of the things I like to do is, is blend inward. Otherwise, you'll just form a line where you've been scrubbing. All right, so uh, what else creates a line, unwanted line? Uh, this is another problem. It's encountered a lot in watercolor, and that's overlap. And if you are a beginner and you haven't done a lot of painting, uh, it can sometimes be surprising. You know, again, you don't need to panic. But let's say in between this space here, I want to fill with a different color. Okay, so if I'm not careful, and I just go in there and paint, and I get a little bit of overlap, because watercolor is a transparent medium and it always gets darker, it's an additive medium, meaning that uh, it never gets lighter, it always gets darker, unless you're using opaque paint, but we're talking about most transparent watercolor. It's going to add to the value of whatever's underneath it. So where you have that little bit of, of overlap, you've just created a line. And I see this in a lot of beginner work, where um, filling in a background color or a color that butts up next to another color is sloppily done. Now you're better off to actually leave a hairline of white, if you're not wanting an outline, than to overlap. Or depending on your eyesight and how accurate you can be with your painting, just get right up to it. But now in some cases, overlap where you're trying to create a line is fine. So obviously I'm talking about unwanted. Again, once that's dry, you can soften it, but now the darker the color, the more your softening is going to show, especially if you're not softening out into a white area. So it gets to a point, or in certain situations, where uh, you're not going to be able to make it any better. Or if you try to make it better, it's just going to uh, show that you tried to repair it. So you just have to determine whether that overlap is a good thing or a bad thing. Now let's talk about one more situation, and this is stylistic. Um, this has to do with the way people paint and draw, and this can happen in any medium, not just watercolor. When you're painting, be aware of your transition from one edge to another. So let's say that behind this light shape here, I wanted a darker shape. Uh, let's say this is a like a sphere, and it's going behind whatever that shape is. But if these I items or objects overlapping objects or in close proximity to each other, um, there's probably going to be a shadow here. Let's let that dry for a minute and I'll come back and talk about that. Alright, so this is dry now. Now, let's say I'm wanting to shade this back object or create a shadow where it's going underneath this object. So a common mistake, again, this is not peculiar to watercolor. You say, well, this is darker, so I'm just going to make an edge here, a dark edge, and they create a line. What you should be doing is conforming that shading to whatever is back here. So let's say this is a sphere. You should be conforming that shadow to the sphere, not to the object in front. So don't follow the edge. Follow the contour of this and how that shadows on this. I just see this all the time. Even if it's a flat object, try to get in the habit of pulling your shading away from an edge when the objects overlap, perpendicular to the edge when possible, and you'll get a more realistic effect of one object going behind the other. Don't follow the outline of the object on top unless the shadow it's casting or the shading that it's it's creating would naturally create that shape on the object below it. So I hope that made sense. I'm going to do it again just for the repetition's sake. They go in and say this is behind that and I'm going to make my shadow follow the edge of that object. That may work but it also may just make it look like an outline. Instead, again, being repetitious here on purpose, pull you're shading away from that edge. Try to shade perpendicular to that edge so it doesn't look like you're outlining the object on top of it. Common, common issue. In fact, you can get that area wet like I'm doing now and charge in and it's great. Get a nice little soft shading going underneath that. All right, so just a quick video to talk about that and edges. And if you have any questions, ask them down in the comments. And I hope that helps you guys out there. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you all in the next video. Thank you so much, patrons, for supporting this channel and making this content possible. You are my sponsors, and I couldn't be prouder of that. See you all in the next video. Bye-bye.